Is it just me, or has it been harder to be on Facebook lately? <laughs> I mean, honestly, these last few months, I've kind of avoided Facebook altogether. I mean, honest debate turns to insults, fights become personal, and people get entrenched in their own viewpoints and demonize others. You know, why can't we disagree without being disagreeable? Welcome to Dining Room Devos. Uh, last time, we talked about the importance of being able to defend your faith and giving reasons for your hope. Today, we're going to look at the way that we make that case. And I think we'll agree that what Peter advocates is good advice for everybody. We're looking at 1 Peter 3, verses 15 and 16. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Peter reminds us that we need to show gentleness and respect towards those that we're talking about our faith with. I mean, we must approach all people with love and respect at all time. You know, it doesn't do any good when, when you're sharing your faith with others and you're given a defense of our faith. It doesn't do any good to win the argument if you lose the person. Loving them is far more important than scoring points in the debate. There's an old expression that says you, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. But the way that some people argue today, I think, is to use vinegar. And then if that doesn't work, you chase the other person down with a fly swatter. Peter says that we should try to keep a clear conscience as we share our faith. Now, what does that mean? What are we keeping a clear conscience of? Well, I think what he means by that is that as we share our faith, that we don't betray our Christian character in the way we defend our faith. You know, have we shown love and patience and understanding and humility? People seeing Jesus in us can be far more convincing than the words that you say. Now, this can get difficult if the other person isn't as respectful towards us as we seek to be towards them, right? We can be tempted to return evil for evil. But Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 5.20 that we are Christ's ambassadors. In other words, we represent Jesus. We represent the kingdom of God to other people. And ambassadors understand that even when things aren't going well, that it's important to maintain a good relationship so that you can have another conversation further on down the road. You have to keep those avenues open. You want a chance to talk again. Peter says, uh, the hope is that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior may be ashamed of their slander. What does he mean by speak maliciously? Well, Peter's writing at a time when there was open hostility to the gospel. And a lot of, of that was based on misconceptions people had about what Christians believed. I mean, the gospel is still fairly new, and it was a mystery to most people. And rumors quickly spread about what Christians, this new cult, uh, believed. And so hateful things were said about us, many times completely in ignorance. And even today, the people that we encounter might have false assumptions about us. That may be based in part on, on bad experiences that, that they've had with other Christians, maybe hypocrisy that they've seen in the church, or they might just think that we're not intelligent for following a God that we can't see. But if we explain our faith well, our posture toward them might dismantle some of their misconceptions. Peter says they might be ashamed of their slander. In other words, they might say at the end of the day, I guess maybe I was wrong about them. Maybe those Christians aren't as bad as I thought. I mean, if we do this right, even if we don't convince the other person to follow Jesus, we should at least earn their respect. If they come in with a negative view of Christians, maybe they leave with a bit of that negativity chipped away. And God can use that to draw the other person to the truth. I mean, it only takes a little bit of water over a dam to eventually erode the entire thing. And when people realize that their assumptions about us are wrong, God's Spirit can use that to, to cause them to question what else they might be wrong about. A final word. Prayer is critical 
when you're sharing your faith. Pray for the other person. If you can, pray before you talk to them. Pray while you're speaking to them, that God would give you the words that he needs them to hear. And then after the conversation is over, continue to pray for that person, that they would be drawn to the truth. In fact, if it's okay, I'd like for us to close our our time today in prayer. Will you join me? God, I thank you for the great privilege we have of sharing your word with others. Lord, I pray that we would be prepared to share the hope that we have, why we believe in Christ and how that gives us hope. But Lord, as we do that, help us to do it always with gentleness and respect. Help us to love other people more than we love winning an argument. And Lord, I pray that as we defend the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we can be Christ-like. Jesus said that when the Son of Man be lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. And we pray that you would draw people to you, that you would use us to do it, that we may be good, uh, give our good testimony, we may testify to the truth of Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us on today's Dining Room Bevo. Pray that you have a blessed weekend. We'll see you again next week.